everyone, it's Adaptive Goddess, and today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Music. So the movie Music I find very problematic in many, many ways, and it's really not just a bad autism movie, it's just a really bad movie. And a lot, like, the only thing I will say that was good about this movie was actually the acting of Kate Hudson, Leslie Autumn Jr., and Maddie, Zell, um, Maddie Ziegler, that's her name, um, and her dancing, Maddie's dancing was actually okay to watch in many of the dance sequences. Um, they were given really problematic material, um... That's kind of it. Um, the only other thing I can say is that the neighborhood that is showcased in this movie, the neighbors are being very, very sweet, but unfortunately that is a very idealistic and idolized and fictional and very made up scenario that is not readily found in the real world. It was great to see what it should be or what it could be but then you get brought back to reality of that's not the way things are currently. So I'm going to put a pin into Autism Speaks. Um, I know a lot of other people have been talking about why that was so problematic and I will speak to that a little bit later. I really wanna focus on just some of the acting, or not the acting, but like story choices and um, the production and watching it as someone who was autistic was kind of weird to say it very nicely. So like in production, the lighting was not fun to watch. It would go from dark to bright to flashing to to start out really bright to, to dull colors to bright colors. And it was just a multitude of things all at once that is really, really, really hard to focus to or really understand what's going on when it's dark and there's this really somber moment to wham, bright colors, bright lights, dancing around, flashing lights, you don't see the connection. And I really couldn't make that connection either. And that was what was really off-putting about this movie overall is there's so many um, just very weird transitions that have to do with lighting that didn't really make sense and like to bring in then the costuming which is a whole nother bag of problems because i kept focusing on the ridiculousness of their costuming i couldn't focus on the words that were being sung and i had subtitles on i couldn't really focus to like what was being portrayed in all these dance sequences and they felt important because they kept popping up but like i couldn't really c understand what the character was trying to convey and that's to me like the word like for me that was really hard to kind of sit there and like look at this movie and understand what the characters are coming from because I really deeply empathize with characters. Typically when I watch a movie, I immediately see myself in that story and want to write a fan fiction on it. I do not want to write a fan fiction of music um, because I just, I couldn't feel myself in that movie. Um, also the credits, the writing for the credits was very childlike and it really does infantize autism and I, I mean I know the character that Maddie's portraying is supposed to be a teenager but it's still like it was Rugrats kind of writing and Rugrats is about babies and this was about a teenager and it just the writing and the story didn't really the writing for the credits and the story didn't really match up I thought I was going to watch a Rugrats movie or like a kid's movie. It didn't match. And that was really off-putting. So now I'm going to go into just some aspects of the story that 
either were so cringy or I had problems with or I was fuming um, or just I didn't like. Um, so, like, for me, the biggest bone of contention with this movie in terms of story was that there were other characters portrayed. And one of them I'm referring to is Felix. I don't actually know the actor's name, but he could have had some kind of like autism or neurodivergency, but they don't explore it. They instead explore his relationship to, I think is his adoptive parents. And that even then puts adoptive parents in a, in a light that unfortunately is true. I have experienced clients who have gone through that kind of treatment by their adoptive parents, but it, it really, doesn't add to the story it kind of does take away from the story of music um and like none of that like the only representation of autism is music and if you were just to look at music as being autistic there's some really inconsistent problematic portrayals anyway like she nicks all stereotypes and unfortunately, I've never experienced, and this, someone may have ticked off all stereotypes, but I've never experienced any of my clients having all stereotypes. And there's, again, autism is a spectrum. And when you're really focusing on one part of the spectrum, you are ignoring everyone else. And while that in of itself can is not so much problematic. If you're not portraying the autistic character well, then it's just it's just it's overall problematic. Um, some of the words people use is really harsh. Things like people pound, crash, poor soul, magical. Or like when someone was talking to the sister, Zoo, that she's been through hell. And like to me that always, like especially the been through hell, is like it's always putting like whatever's going on is such a burden on the caregiver. Which of course, taking care of someone is always going to feel like a huge stress because it is. But it also minimizes whatever music or whatever the autistic person is going through and that always to me was like the heartbreaking part of this like scene is that it's not none of that's part of what music is and i mean music's the name of the the movie music's supposed to be the main character but at times she feels like a plot device or a side character or just kind of well, I mean, let's put this on Zoo, and this is what music's gonna do, and oh look, this other character is gonna fall in love with Zoo. So it's kind of just used as this prop, and I'm sorry, autistic people are not props. Um, the tone of the music after the death of one of the characters is really, really off. Like, it's supposed to be sad. And it's creepily happy. And how it occurs, there is no way that any of the other characters in the movie know that this death happened. And so for this to kind of be a thing is really weird. And so then when it's all said, like when that music piece is over, it's never brought up again. And I'm sorry. But if music, the character was autistic, she would have known something was up because a change in schedule is very noticeable to someone who is rigid with schedule. And I mean, I can, we can always talk about if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but this is how they're portraying music. And she would have noticed that the character who had died wasn't there anymore. And it's kind of, it minimizes the importance of the character who had died because he died and all of a sudden nothing in the movie has changed. It's just, he's dead. 
Um, autism and music's autism is used to kind of move the story along. Oh, there needs to be a problem. Music's having a tantrum. Um, oh, they need some time alone. Music is doing something else. And for a movie that's about autism and supposed to be about this character, music, she's not in a lot of scenes. And her level of support needing, like needed, really ranges in this movie to the point that it just, it feels fake. So in the beginning, she, the grandmother has set up the community to support her so that music can go out into, into the community. Um, someone's always paying for her food, her lunches. Um, someone's always making sure that she's safe and gets back to the home or back to the apartment. Um, then there's always someone looking after her. But she doesn't, and so she needs help braiding. She needs help making breakfast. She needs all the support. But then when the other two characters, the two that fall in love, need some alone time, music's safe with scissors. And I'm not saying that an autistic person's never safe with scissors. What I'm saying is the character music for needing that level of support that she had previously to then just being safe with scissors is a little off um, in terms of levels of support. Um, the, in the, so in the very beginning, music's grandma dies, which is what propels the story. But when I was watching it, I got physically and emotionally just irritated because there was no one medically who was looking after music. And I want to say that doesn't happen in the medical field, but I mean, in terms of trauma, sometimes people fall through the cracks. And unfortunately, music fell through the cracks on this one. But there should be someone, if something traumatic happened, who's looking after music medically because trauma does such interesting things to the brain and when i mean interesting i mean it's very complicated and it's very tragic what can happen to the brain but it it does interesting things when trauma is involved because certain parts of the brain aren't activated other parts of the brain are overactivated, and when you have someone who is neurodivergent autistic anything it's gonna create even different changes and that was the other thing too is that it didn't really for music and it kind of was a thing that happened and then all was well and I've never experienced that to happen if you have like leave in a comment down below like if someone has been able to who was neurodivergent to kind of experience a trauma and then just be their baseline after that. I have yet to experience it. Um, so it, to me just felt fake and felt off. Um, so now I'm going to come to, I think what was the hardest part to watch, which are the two restraints. And I know Restraints are definitely a controversial topic, um, but the restraints I saw were done so wrong, they could have ended up killing music. And I was taught to do restraints uh, not on autistic children, uh, but on those who um, had experienced um, behavioral um, challenges that led them to be very aggressive, destroy property, to end up facing criminal charges um, who were also in the foster care system. Um, so these were individuals who really needed a lot of support and unfortunately they would lash out at us. And so in order to keep everyone safe, 
we did learn restraints, but we learned them in a very, um, in a very kind of step-by-step -step process. And they were only used as a last resort. Um, and anytime a kid said like, it's hurting me, stop, we went hands off. Um, but like the restraints I saw in that movie or crashes as they're referred to, were just so wrong. They were not best practice. They could end up killing music. And the fact that they kind of restrain her without consequence is a little disconcerting too, because whenever we would restrain a kid um, in the cottages or my clinic, um, we would like repair and talk about and really process what happened, how it happened, how did we get to the restraint and how they were feeling afterwards. And I know music's not vocal in terms of speaking a lot of words. She's not necessarily um, speaking in a lot of complete sentences. She doesn't talk about her feelings. Um, it's still really important to kind of sit down and treat her like she's a teenager that she is portrayed in the movie. Because then you're just infantizing and making a child out of an autistic teen. And that's not age appropriate either. Um, Zoo, the big sister, does several 180s in like seconds in this movie, and they are a little weird. Um, they happen where the, the biggest one that I just thought was off was towards the end, they're in a inpatient facility, and this has been what Zoo's been wanting is to put her into an inpatient facility, and just 180s dash out of there and I've never experienced someone to be like oh yeah well let's do that there's a lot of paperwork that goes involved into discharging someone um, who has been admitted or in the process of admitting um, just because liability reasons um, there's some other ones where she's like I'm really frustrated with her and then like split second later like oh let's go get ice cream or snow cone or something um, which those are more kind of human emotions but there isn't a lot of processing um, and there's really not like a way to show what zoo's processing there's a lot of to show what music's processing or what they're all processing um, which is what I think the music videos were supposed to be was people processing things. But again, there was so much transitions that it was really hard to follow the story. Um, music singing at the end, I had one of the biggest problems with, um, because again, it trivializes her autism her autism is only really used as a plot device. It really only is used as kind of a, a look, happy ending. She can sing, which I would be more okay with if she was kind of singing the words throughout the movie. Um, Cause she says like make eggs, braid hair, walk, or go walk or go for a walk or something. Um, so she does say some words, but like for her to sing this entire song was really out of character of music. Um, so if I was working with a kid who needed as much support as music, I wouldn't necessarily with like, I think it's been a month, a month of working with them that they are going to sing a song. Um, so it really felt inauthentic and just felt like autism was used as a plot device.
and kind of used to promote a happy ending. Um, the other thing that I had kind of a problem with was when one of the characters said, I had a family with autism, I know what to do. Because one of the biggest sayings in the autistic, autism field is when you've seen a kid with autism, you've seen a kid with autism. Um, and that's because you don't really overgeneralize. You don't always assume that because it worked for one kid, it's going to automatically work for the next. Um, because every kid is different. Every kid is unique. That is how I've always approached um, my clients at the clinic. Um, is that they are their unique and own individual that I happen to share my autism in common with. And when they are having hard times, I can tell them like, hey, it's rough. We could get through this. And it does help them. Um, so lastly, I'm going into Autism Speaks. Um, the fact that Sia used Autism Speaks I know everyone's been dreaming her online for using it. The thing is, is for someone who's outside of the autism community, Autism Speaks is one of the loudest and most prominent voices, which is a bad thing. But a lot of people who are not autistic don't know that. And one of the reasons I don't like that company uh, and that organization is because they really feel that autism's the disease that needs to be cured. I'm not a disease. I like who I am. You can't cure me. Um, enough data has gone in to show that this isn't a disease. There is no cure. There's treatment, but no cure. Um, and even though they've kind of taken that off their branding, they don't really listen. And I've never experienced them listening to autistic voices. I've experienced them to silence them, um, to call autistic people names, um, to really kind of lash out at the community they're serving. And um, they're, they're one of the companies that started the Light It Up Blue and the puzzle piece, which in of itself is very problematic um, because the puzzle piece means that we need to be solved. We don't, we need acceptance. Um, but I'm not so mad at Sia using them because I do understand if someone isn't in the autism community that they wouldn't necessarily know the really bad underpinnings of the autism speak that they may not know all the complexity and the backlash that the autism community has faced from autism speaks. I am very mad at autism speaks for being a part of this film, but I don't necessarily, I know Sia should have done more research into autism organizations, but the problem is, is that, for neurotypicals, Autism Speaks is one of the loudest and most prominent voices for autistic people, and that needs to change. So overall, this movie sucks. <laughs> Don't watch it. Don't put money into it. It's not a good movie. I don't blame any of the actors involved. I blame the writers, the costuming, I blame Sia herself because she does have a large part and she said she had a large hand in this and how she basically dealt with the negative backlash is not okay. Uh, I blame Autism Speaks, but I don't blame the actors individually because they don't have a lot of say in product and projects like this, especially as a passion project, I think as Sia once had referred to it as. So that's the movie music. Um, I may do a video on like media representation, but all I do know is that a movie does need to be made that shows why restraints are so dangerous. Why having people say you've been through hell to the caregiver 
but not really look at the child or the teen or the adult, how autism can look in many different people in a community to show what happens when someone trivializes autism, to show what happens when someone trusts an organization that doesn't actually have the best interests of the people they serve at heart. So pretty much I'm asking is for filmmakers, writers, the, the people of Hollywood, make a To Kill a Mockingbird movie that shows the rawness of racism but make it to show the rawness of ableism, to show the rawness of how people with neurodivergencies are being treated because it is not okay and we do need representation. And music could have been a phenomenal film had Autism Speaks not been involved, had they not used ableist words, had production been more aware of the effects of flashing lights, bright lights, random costuming can have on an autistic brain. So yeah, overall, those are my thoughts of music. I didn't personally enjoy it, um, which really sucks because I do love Leslie Autumn Jr. as uh, Aaron Burr in Hamilton. Kate Hudson is a phenomenal actress. And I do really like Maddie, Zell um, Maddie Ziegler's dancing, but it was the overarching other influences that really just made this movie suck. So comments down below, what movie or other media representation that features someone with neurodiversity or neurodivergency do you like, do you watch? Um, I'm kind of um, more like I like Sherlock. Um, as far as a neurodivergency, I think it does a really good job of showing the inner workings of the brain in a very fascinating way. So that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and gently tap that like button. And remember to be kind, compassionate, and true to you.